I've had four scenarios where doctors told me I had to be on pharma the rest of my life and I'm not on either pill. And I've had two times where doctors told me I had to have surgeries that I haven't had. And I just think, I think Western Med is broken. I, for all the good that those things have done, and in acute cases, if you're about to die, there's nothing better than Western medicine. Yeah. But preventative, it's horrific. Telling me that in the early 60s, diabetes didn't exist in this country. So we've gone from uh, a nation of pre kids that are drinking 64 ounce Cokes at the 7-Eleven and their mom doesn't know them better to tell them no. Like I've literally seen it in rural Illinois and this cup's like this large and it has a little bottom where it can fit in the cup holder in the car. And it's like, how does that mom not know? We've now exported that. Like 20 years ago, nobody was diabetic in China. There are 400 million people that are pre-diabetic in China in 20 years. All those people are now on diabetes medicine for the rest of their life. And instead of saying like, don't eat the, don't drink the Coke, don't go to McDonald's four times a week. But anytime you can get people off of pharma and onto some form of plant-based medicine, it's no different than off of processed food and plant-based mm. food. Like Johnny, for, if, I'm sure you guys know sweet greens. Like Johnny wants to be like the McDonald's of healthy food. Boom. And I think he, and, and he's not, all, it's mostly plant-based, but you can get fish or chicken there and stuff. And it's such an amazing company. He's got great company culture and um, just a really smart, enlightened CEO, really wanting to move this forward. Getting very involved in trying to change policy around food and schools. Make, but look how corrupted the food pyramid has gotten. Like, they knew that healthy fats were, were safe for you and were actually beneficial for you in the 70s, and they paid off Harvard researchers. The sugar industry paid off Harvard researchers to say that fat was bad. It's, it like sent America down this path for like 50 years that we're only now saying like, oh, if I eat an avocado, it's not bad for me, it's actually good for me. And, and people on the coast know that. But you go in the middle of America and there's still, there's still a lot of women who think, or men, who think drinking a Diet Coke and a Power Bar. Like Burzen from Parsley Health tells that story of like, I was in Columbia Med School and I thought I was eating healthy because I had a Diet Coke and a Power Bar for lunch. It's like, it's insidious. The marketing that gets woven into your brain is really insidious. And then the other side of that, you know, are we gonna look back in 2070? Go again, Taoism, back to 5,000 years old, they invented the whole concept of food as medicine. Like, they believed that there were certain foods that you ate when you had certain illnesses. Uh, and there were doctors who were experts at that. Like, I'm fairly, like I know what my next 35 years is and it's like mainstreaming wellness for the benefit of humanity. I know someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are on site at the New West Summit, the Cannabis Tech Conference. We are now going to be talking with Jay Ferris. Hey, Jay. Hello. How hey, are you? Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So yeah. pumped for this. Founder of the Wellness Agency, dedicated to companies and talent in the rapidly growing global $4.2 trillion wellness economy. And this is pushing back against the failings of big food, big pharma, and Western medicine. I'm so pumped to talk about this. This is um, obviously so massive. Um, Jay, but let's talk about your journey first before we get to TWA. Um, who are you? What was your journey like? How did you get interested in this? I, uh, I, know, I know Catherine Inney, who works with New West, through, she used to manage bands that I had on a record label. So I had a record label called Mammoth Records. And we were the first indie label to have two Platinum Macs and I was inside Atlantic for a while and had fun with that but and then I was in media at Lionsgate the film and TV studio but I started getting really my own journey and it was watching my father's decline and really bad advice from Western medicine my brother had cancer really bad advice from Western medicine in my own journey where this is 10 15 years ago but I was running probably 35 miles a week and, and I had the best doctor for, for men in LA supposedly. And he puts me on cholesterol medicine. And I'm like, and I do like one 10 mile run a week probably uh, in total. 
and I, I was like, a week later, two weeks later, I come back to him, I was like, I feel like I'm gonna pull a muscle on my calf. And, and he's like, we'll monitor it, tell me, you know, next week I go on the run, sure enough, I pull it, I go in and see him the next day. And I was like, what do I do? And, and now that I've studied functional medicine and Taoism and the Taoist mm -hmm. concepts of food as medicine and, and a lot of, there's 10 basic questions like, are you stressed out? Are you meditating? Are you drinking too much booze? Are you eating whole foods? Are you eating too much processed food, too much sugar? Yeah. Um, Such simple, critical questions. Didn't ask me one of those. <laughs> and he goes, I, I was like, what do I do? And he's like, I guess you gotta stop running. And I, I knew nothing about wellness. And I stood up, I laughed in his face and I walked out the door. And that kind of began this journey. And then it was coinciding with my father's decline and, and just, you know, his doctor was his best friend who he hung out at the country club with and, you know, so he thought he was getting, he was getting horrific advice. So, and that's, um, that's literally kind of, I, I've, I've had two, I've had four scenarios where doctors told me I had to be on pharma the rest of my life and I'm not on either pill. And I've had two times where doctors told me I had to have surgeries that I haven't had. And I just think, I think, Western med is broken. I, for all the good that those things have done, and in acute cases, if you're about to die, there's nothing better than Western medicine, yeah. but preventative, it's horrific. Mm -hmm. uh, pharma, whether it's the oxy story and how there aren't 100,000 doctors in jail, I don't know. Like if you were selling that shit on the street corner and they were black, mm -hmm. all the, there'd be 100,000 people in jail for the next 50 years. Um, uh, yeah, that's sort of where it, where it began, I guess. Damn, what, and th this has been such a reoccurring theme of people that we sit down with is that they experience some sort of like a horrific, uh, like truth about the uh, ignorance of, 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 of certain processes that are happening in our world that are literally impacting hundreds of thousands or millions of people on, 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 a, on a yearly basis with their health decisions. And in this case, it's like, I'm not sitting back anymore. My parents are affected, my grandparents are affected, my children are affected, I'm affected. It, this, it scales so much. So there's a friend of mine named Robin Burzen uh, who has an amazing company called Parsley Health. And that's mainstreaming functional medicine on a subscription model basis. She announced yesterday the close of her Series B, 26 million. She was telling me that in the early 60s, diabetes didn't exist in this country. So we've gone from uh, a nation of pre kids that are drinking 64 ounce Cokes at the 7-Eleven and their mom doesn't know them better to tell them no. Like I've literally seen it in rural Illinois and this cup's like this large and it has a little bottom where it can fit in the cup holder in the car and it's like, how does that mom not know? We've now exported that. Like 20 years ago, nobody was diabetic in China. There are 400 million people that are pre-diabetic in China in 20 years. All those people are now on diabetes medicine for the rest of their life. And, and instead of saying like, don't eat the, don't drink the Coke, don't go to McDonald's four times a week. So um, that's, and, and the journey's evolving, but there, there literally is a moral. I, I say like, save the planet, and, and a lot of that plant-based thing even helps there, save our democracy, and then it's like mainstream wellness for the benefit of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Uh, as we get into this like solution of mainstream uh, wellness and all of the different diverse areas that you want to target with TWA, let's also talk about um, a little bit deeper on, uh, you just gave us this example of these ridiculous, uh, whatever they are, like <laughs> those ridiculous cups that fit in yeah, this yeah. The small car, car cup holder at the bottom, but then it's like at the top <laughs> all day. Um, there are so many examples of that, the processed foods, the factory farms, the uh, antibiotic resistance, the, um, uh, the amount of, of, of issues that are arising within our bodies from just uh, over, overloading the amount of food that we put in them rather than doing intermittent fasting yeah. or yeah, 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 all these different types of things. All right, what are the hidden forces or the hidden agenda behind why wellness is so fucked? I don't, I think wellness has taken off. Like the, the but why did it get, like what were those forces do you think? Like what was propagating the, like the non-awakened? Pharma in the, I mean you know this, pharma in the 20s, you know, they made it racist on weed, on canna, and it's, you know, it was the dirty Mexicans and all that shit. Uh, Ricky Lake did a really, her last doc, We the People, I thought actually did a pretty cool visual narrative of how, early U.S. big pharma demonized the canna plant, 
because they didn't because it was solving problems that they couldn't solve. There's there's evidence that the U.S. government said we don't have other solutions for this. Let's not make that plan illegal. And they, there were racist cartoons that went into newspapers. They turned public opinion against it and they made it illegal. And it's been it's been misinformation ever since. And you can damn well bet that everybody in pharma is going to continue. There's so many like mm -hmm. campaigns going on to demonize it still, and it's. To me, anytime you can, like, again, I, the, the plan itself has so many medicinal qualities to it, which we're still, there has to be a ton more research, but there's yes. so much to learn still. And, and anytime I think, you know, I'm working with uh, a friend, Bob Forrest, and, and Will Clyden from Ohio Energetics on something because they think they have something that helps with opiate addiction mm -hmm. and how do you start to commercialize that. But anytime you can get people off of pharma, and on to some form of plant-based medicine, it's no different than off of processed food and plant-based mm. food. And it's, I think there's Whoa. just as big an opportunity and just as big of a sort of a par imperative. The, the pharma side of, of things where people go on antibiotics, like if you know much about your gut biome, mm. it's, they're now calling it the second brain. It's mm. got as many um, receptors as your brain does. It constantly talks to your brain all day long. Um, and when you pump it full of antibiotics of any kind, it completely fucks that. So if Oxy's up here doing this to you, like turning you into an addict, antibiotics are like ripping this up. So, um, and there are some like, I think leading edge probiotic companies and things that again are plant-based. So, um, or, or have the essence of that. So I think that's where big opportunity lies and a big need. All right, so we're on this uh, wellness awakening that's happening. Uh, cannabis is one of these. You gave these examples like moving away from you know the processed foods into more like whole foods, raw foods, this type of stuff. Um, also into like moving away from maybe like a sedentary uh, you know lifestyle into a more active uh, lifestyle. There's all these different like dichotomies, and you know moving yourself to this side of the spectrum is where you moment to moment just live better and live longer and all this type of stuff. How is TWA, how do you guys find where to allocate your time in the wellness? Like what is, how did you figure out what to even target in the wellness industry? Cause it's just over 4 trillion bucks. There's so many opportunities. I've got this thesis that what the Valley was to tech 30 years ago, Venice is starting to become to wellness. Venice, California. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's not, you know, it's Johnny from Sweet Greens just raised at a billion dollar valuation and Smarty Pants Vitamins, which is organic, you know, gummy bear vitamins. They're they're probably there. Our cats with seed. There are these great companies and these great founders. And it's kind of like when I used to have a record label and I'd find a band that was playing for 20 people in a basement and figure out how to sell two million albums. I feel like I now find entrepreneurs that I connect with. It's the same thing. You see something in them and you're like oh, I can help them out here, here, and here, and add value, and yeah. like I believe in their mission, and if I can, if I can help succeed in that mission, we're, we're moving this, the mission of what we're trying to do forward. Um, so it's part of its gut, part of its instinct, but it's also that, I call it the three years theory. Um, like Danny Goldberg back in the day used to always, he's like, I didn't know if Nirvana was good or not, but like Silva told me that, that they were great, and then you said something about them, and so and so, so like, so then I believed it. And, and I, you're constantly, like in this ecosystem, you constantly hear of new companies and, and sort of what we did with Mammoth, I didn't want to have, when I had Mammoth Records, the record label, we had a lot of different alternative subgenres within alternative. And I kind of think we're looking at the same kind of portfolio approach mm. for the companies we want to work with. So is there a bone broth company we can blow up? Mm. And now we're doing, I just hooked up Will from Ojai with this really dope bone broth company called Al Venice and they're going to do a CBD bone broth. And it's like anytime we can help with those kind of collaborations, um, that's what we love doing. Okay. So. Okay. I, the, we also, after so many incredible LA and San Diego interviews, we've been talking to people. They like the Silicon Beach is the f phrase. Of, <laughs> I like that a lot. And it's true. The blow ups yeah. of these billion dollar, incredible evaluated companies that are just like, just health and wellness. Yeah. yeah, just rocketing that industry forward. So it sounds like uh, there's actually quite a bit of like the wellness agency focused on uh, creating value adds 
for uh, companies that are in the sector, coming mm -hmm. up in the sector, and you're trying to figure out how to run uh, like network shares or like uh, combining certain things together, like CBD bone broth, like what the hell? Who would have? Well, it was really funny because like I, I'm working with, I'm working with Ohi. Al Venice once I've just met her, the founder. I love her. She's amazing. Like building a really cool company, and she like she said it off the cuff, and I was like, okay. And I just it was a one line text. They had a phone call the next day, and it's happening. So it's like so easy to move some of that stuff along. We just did an event for another company called Reset Bioscience, which the founders like really successful dude out of Hong Kong, probably his fifth company, um, and they've got testing labs that are sort of pharmaceutical grade testing on 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 the CBD side, based out of Austin, um, and and the amount we did a 60 person event for him at this vegan restaurant in Venice called Plant Food and Wine, and it was like 20 a, th a third of it was talent, 20 people, a third of it was money. A third of it was founders of companies, but there was just like this super organic, natural cross collaboration of efforts and ideas, and and uh, so that's I don't know. That's what we like doing. It's fun. Yeah. So then, where do you find uh, the like? How do you guys identify the the people that are in the wellness space that you guys want to collaborate with? Uh. uh it just like now, especially, it's just starting to come funnel in. Yeah. It starts funneling in after yeah. some growth. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I've got I've got like connections in England, and they're like, you got to meet with this company, Finova. They've just got all this, you know, this twenty billion dollar Dutch companies investing in them, and it's the mulberry leaf, and it lowers your Whoa. blood sugar levels naturally, and it's so it's traditional Chinese medicine in the mulberry. The mulberry know. leaf. Yeah, 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 which it has all these medicinal properties. Um, I love it. There's so many examples of that in nature of ways that we've kind of just like, either indigenous people still know and uh, the, the, like the markets haven't uh, yeah. found out yet, but there's so many of those hidden things and even things that indigenous people still don't know or that archeologically we still haven't figured out yeah. that we knew 100,000 years ago, yeah. but yeah. I love, so there's still so some the, the Dao that. The Taoism, like going back to Taoism and there's, there's a woman named Zoe Gong who's, she's 23, went to NYU, but from Shanghai knows more about traditional Chinese medicine than any person I've met and really wants to contemporize TCM because there are so many, it's a $10 billion market globally, but you look at it and it's sort of stuck in the, it's like the worst design and everything else. TCM? Yeah, tra traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And and there, I think there are more and more of these opportunities to where you realize that traditional businesses are failing us, whether it's toothpaste companies and they've got fluoride in it and it leads to early stage Alzheimer's and by, you know, let's let's look at charcoal based tooth, toothpaste companies and the, the next generation brands know that anybody under 30 is only seeing stuff on Instagram or other social platforms and you've got Crest over here that's still probably doing TV commercials and, you know, print advertising in newspapers. It's like two different worlds. Um, <laughs> so the charcoal toothpaste companies are on like TikTok and Instagram and pretty Snapchat much, and pretty then, much, yeah. yeah. And it's like yeah. that's the only world they know, so that's where they go. And these guys, are, and I, I think sector after sector, you are seeing uh, better for you alternatives sort of come up. So we're constantly looking. We have there's different organizations that I'm a part of. Um, but the funnel just keeps getting better as our sort of reputation gets out there. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Okay. Now, uh, you were giving us all of this, like, I just, I just love this point on uh, the, the, these newer um, wellness market that's erupting. There's like old dogs that uh, are trying to like figure out some of the young dog marketing <laughs> strategies and stuff. And then there's, um, and then the, if they don't adapt, I mean, these, this is what happens with the, the, the Goliaths and the Davids and like, how does it, how do Goliaths fail? Yeah. And uh, in a sense, they shouldn't. They should know how to watch and adapt, yeah. but they don't necessarily have the right um, uh, they innovation. Don't, they don't know how to start new brands. Like, it was funny, like when, there's all these analogies to when I had a record label to what I'm doing now. And back then, Atlantic did a JV with me, with Mammoth Records, because they were horrible. They were great at selling 14 million Hootie and the Blowfish records. But like, try and tell them to figure out how to sell the first 100,000 to create the right buzz. Their cost per unit sold was just through the f different, totally different generation. But you see the same thing here where 
you know, Pepsi has a venture, has a corporate venture arm, and they're they're super aggressive. Nobody knows about it because they know if their names on it. So they're buying healthy food brands, either buying majority stake, investing in. Nobody knows what's going on. They like want it beneath Whoa. the radar because they know they're. But they they're. I actually think that's good. Like they're and then they're giving better distribution. We're we're deep in talks with Hershey's Ventures. Hershey has a venture arm now, and it's like. Parents don't want to just buy crappy effing sugar for their yeah. kids anymore. Yeah. So they're all. I actually don't think it's bad. Like they know yeah. that they, yeah. know, they know that their name is such shit <laughs> that for some of these brands that they can't attach themselves to it, and and they've they've gotten over that hook. Pep, yeah. If, if 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 yeah. If 50 years ago it was okay to um, to drink the big fatties of of, of soda and it was okay to uh, to drink. Their- 50 years ago, go back and look at it. It's like the chicken story. Have you ever seen the chickens today and the chickens in the 60s? They're literally twice as big because we pump them so much, it's full of so many hormones and stuff. Coca-Cola yeah. 50 years ago was served in eight ounce bottles. Then it was 12 ounce, then it was 16, then it was 32. So. Um, oh my goodness, yes, yes. You and didn't used to be able to buy Cokes and yeah. literally the eight ounce bottle back in the 60s. Yeah, just that little tiny tasty bit of soda. Yeah. And now, yeah. It, and then uh, this, is, this is super, super interesting. So now you have, um, you have what is like looking like uh, Goliaths that are watching uh, the wellness market, and in a sense, if they have these venture arms or these um, innovation departments that are trying to like um, help accelerate it, cool, uh, oh, great, give them give one of the wellness companies that are doing great work massive distribution and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, at the same time, it's also important to think of like, well. Uh, isn't it, in a sense, aren't we trying to propagate new code? Like, is Pepsi actually going to be like, yo, uh, actually, our like main thing, like the really sugary soda stuff, <laughs> is just literally just not that great. And maybe like we should probably in the future just you know help market people towards new products that are not even that. You know, how do they? Because are they really thinking that? Because uh, that's something that the wellness agency and just like in general um, wellness markets and modern well-being markets are <coughs> in a sense we want to move away from old code and so it seems like some I, of these small I, dogs I, I are. I think it's like a company by company thing like Johnny for, if you, I'm sure you guys know sweet greens like Johnny wants to be like the McDonald's of healthy food boom and I think he and and he's not all it's mostly plant-based but you can get fish or chicken there and stuff and it's, it's such an amazing company. He's got great company culture and um, just a really smart, enlightened CEO really wanting to move this forward, getting very involved in trying to change policy around food in schools. I mean, I think about what I ate. Huge. It's, I ate garbage in school for like 12 years, just like the worst. So that he's trying to get involved in that I think is very important. And, and there will be, uh, there'll be old line companies that reinvent themselves. You know that who is it? Burger King that's now doing an Impossible the Burger. Impossible yeah. Burgers, yeah. Um, so. So cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I, I think where you can get buy-in from these guys, I, you don't want to shunt it. I I think there will be companies who surge past. Maybe it's Johnny and Sweet Greens. Maybe it's somebody else, um, and, and they'll coexist. Like I don't, it's not like McDonald's is going to disappear. I don't I don't make that case. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very interested in to learn about what the maximal uh, efficiency is of the objective function of implementing more modern well-being and wellness technology into our world because I feel like we always have these weird like slip-ups that happen and these oopses looking back at it and I wonder how to like eliminate those so that it's... What do you mean? Give me an example. Um, like, uh, like instances of when you have a like only later on did we figure out blockchain and cryptocurrencies, right, and decentralization technology after like uh, hundreds of years of using um, fiat currencies mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And and it just, uh, it's starting to make more, more and more sense. Like maybe if we didn't have uh, issues with, you know, with uh, migrating currencies across country lines and stuff like that, that it could have, unleashed a completely different paradigm in the way that we engage with each other creatively, endeavor, Mm -hmm. 
all this type of stuff. So that's just one like big macro abstract one. Another one is like the wellness one. Like why did we have to endeavor into pumping chickens in factory farms? Like, we still do. We didn't need to do that. We are 50 years later, kids in 2070 are gonna be like, you guys are fucking insane that you yeah. slaughtered billions of animals and now we grow clean meat in bioreactors. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff like, I don't wanna have oops moments where billions of animals died or like that we had to have like egregious- but look, but look, how, look, how, look how corrupted, there's a couple of points I wanna make, but look mm -hmm. how corrupted yeah. the food pyramid has gotten. Like they knew that healthy fats were were safe for you and were actually beneficial for you in the 70s, and they paid off Harvard researchers, the sugar industry paid off Harvard researchers to say that fat was bad. It's, it like sent America down this path for like 50 years that we're only now saying like, oh, if I eat an avocado, it's not bad for me, it's actually good for me. And, and people on the coast know that. But you go in the middle of America and there's still there's still a lot of women who think, or men, who think drinking a Diet Coke and a Power Bar. Like Burzen from Parsley Health tells that story of like, I was in Columbia Med School and I thought I was eating healthy because I had a Diet Coke and a Power Bar for lunch. It's like, it's insidious. The marketing that gets woven into your brain is really insidious. Yeah. And then the other side of that, you know, are we gonna look back in 2070? Go, b again, Taoism, back to 5,000 years old, they invented the whole concept of food as medicine. Like they believed that there were certain foods that you ate when you had certain illnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were doctors who were experts at that. So China lost a lot of that knowledge. They're now sort of reacquainting themselves with it. Um, like if you go through their history in the last 200 years, it's just a lot of turmoil and civil war after civil war. So it's sort of trauma and type of generational trauma, but now they're starting to rediscover wellness. And for all of China's faults, President Xi gave a white paper on wellness at, this, mm -hmm. at the last five-year party Congress, which blows my mind. Like, yeah. would you ever imagine Trump doing that? Like, it would never happen. So uh, I think there is a real hunger and a thirst for it, and, and you're right. Like, if, you know, I even, you know, if you go to that thing of save the planet, save our democracy, mainstream wellness, the, the impact of raising cattle versus cricket protein or plant-based protein, or it's just so different on the impact on our planet. And I think we will be forced to change it if we're gonna survive. You keep coming back to Taoism, so I must uh, endeavor into this because uh, I love Taoism. I love the way I think it's, um, these, these teachings are probably some of the most uh, important in the world, and yet they are extremely buried in the noise of civilization today. So what has been your relationship with Taoism, and, and how is it also uh, really closely, like you said, let thy food be thy medicine. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, how else have, have you um, really implemented that into your own culture and into your company's culture? I don't, I don't know if it's, it's maybe more my ongoing personal journey. And I, I do go to Asia four to six times a year. We're doing a lot of business over there. Um, again, I don't agree with a lot of stuff the Chinese government's doing, but from a business standpoint, there's 500 million millennials and they're all you know, 97% of them are buying stuff on mobile commerce weekly. So um, I've given talks for D2C businesses that if you're building a brand for the future, you're kind of a goofball if you, if you ignore what's going on in Asia. Um, and I go over there, and I think it's a lot like here. Like I, I, I have friends who even give me shit about doing business in China, and I was like, we have cops who shoot black people on the backs and we have as many black people in jail as they have Muslims in, in that province in jail. So uh, I don't think either government's perfect. I like ours a lot better, but um, I just, I think it's my own journey around meditation and what's, what's the right path for me and how do I ground myself and by no means am I an expert, but I've enjoyed studying it and I enjoy continuing to learn. And what does it feel like to you? What? Taoism, the way, what does the way feel like to you? I have no idea. When I, uh, yeah, I really don't know. Um, I, I have sort of a 10 point system for me that grounds me, but I don't, I don't know that that's the way. Um, 
I, I think more about my like true north and my path, and I know when I'm on it, and I know when I'm not. So. I like that. Yeah. 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 That's definitely what it feels like with me. Yeah. Sometimes there's like, di okay, this is an interesting point here. Then, at those bifurcating moments when it's like, what is my real north here? And there's like the decision mm -hmm. that's being made. Uh, for a lot of people, it can be as simple as like. You know, do I spend these couple hours with my kid, or do I work, or do I, you know, go on a hike, or do I work, or you know, whatever it is, like things like that. Should I go to this endeavor with this person or not? Or yeah, how do you feel into that, to those moments? I don't think there's anything wrong with going off your path. Just be able to acknowledge to yourself that like mm. you've stepped off your path. That like, does this really? Like I'm fairly. Like, I know what my next 35 years is, and it's like mainstreaming wellness for the benefit of humanity. Yeah. And if anything I can do, like on the talent side, what we look at is people that we think, like a Zoe Gong, that we think we can turn into household names in the next seven to 10 years and help them mainstream a business and a concept. But like, you, it's tough to like fight back against just what we were talking about earlier. The McDonald's, the Pepsi, the Pizza Huts have the marketing spin those guys have in middle America. But can you turn some, can you find 10 people, like a Dave Asprey with Bulletproof, but even bigger? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you mainstream some of these people so where their narrative and their storytelling ability gets out there? And you, and you get people to realize, like, hey, maybe I shouldn't be on all these prescription pills for the rest of my life. Maybe I shouldn't be at McDonald's all the time. Um, uh, maybe canna in, in whatever yes. form is right for me has better medicinal properties than than these antibiotics. Oh, yeah. yeah, that I'm getting jammed out by my face by my doctor. So, what? Do, how does TWA make the leap with getting those people around the world to convert to modern wellness styles? I think it's happening. I mean, I think there are a lot of companies that are really taken off. So it's we're just trying to. Like, I use that analogy of what Conway did a long time ago with SV Angel in the Valley, and he connected people, he solved problems, he, yeah. and we're, we're more consumer packaged goods or we're products, so we're not, it's different than him. But if I walk down, if I walk down Abikini in Venice, or if I hang out in Erwan for two hours doing meetings over coffees, four founders will walk by me and I'm probably helping out three of them. And, and Sometimes it's a contractual relationship, and sometimes it's just an introduction. And, but the more we can feed that ecosystem, I think is the right ethos to have. And um, we're super. There's a company I love called Conscious City Guide, Mel Nehas, and she had this. She created like the definitive platform for conscious events globally, and she listed like 8,000 of them in 18 months. Just sort of took on a life of its own, and she really wanted to. You know, at the same time, I was hanging out with Gersh, who runs AEG, which is like Coachella and stuff like that. And Rap I knew what Rapino was looking at for Live Nation. And those guys and their festival side were trying to figure out how to they kind of fix the food at the festivals. And they started to bring in art. And now they wanted to bring in sort of conscious or wellnessness. And they're also looking at like, what's a wellness Coachella look like? They're all trying to like play with that game. And just connecting her with them. And Rapino fell in love with her. And now, all of a sudden, she's got the muscle to, he wants to build it into the culture of his company. He wants to look at these events with her. So there's so much benefit that comes out of those two knowing each other and helping each other out. But it's like, she and I are now working on four other projects. So it's like, by putting that deal in place for her, we help the overall ecosystem. And, and the more, I think, I think we're at this phase of it. We're, we're Conway and SV Angel 25 years ago. So I think it's early days. Okay. And then what would you say then is the role of things like artificial intelligence in the modern wellness uh, sector? I've never thought of it. What do you think? Uh, things like maybe uh, having a constant stream of our biometrics be mm -hmm. analyzed and then predict uh, pathologies or like have an AI coach that just helps you on that North Star alignment on people to network with or on um, food, sleep, exercise decisions to make. I think it's happening. Uh, Reset Bioscience, which is a CBD company we work with, I know is in meetings with one of the big shoe manufacturers about just that stuff where they'd be a bit of the so software to their hardware. Um, I think it's great. I always wonder if that wearable technology is really going to take off. Do you think it is? 
Uh, partly yes, and also partly um, the computer vision uh, and uh, ability to get the uh, biometric streams from things like front-facing cameras uh, yeah. is also just, so I don't even need to wear some okay. stuff. That, so there's kind of like both. You, you probably know way more about this than I do. Well, there's a, there's a big part of uh, wellness as yeah. well as is that, um, because it's, it's, it's being able to stream up a constant like, your heart's beating 100,000 yeah. times, but you're not measuring that heart rate variability right now, but it can give you tremendous insights if you were mm -hmm. um, on stress levels and so much more. And same thing with, uh, with just like what is actually happening inside your gut, right, mm -hmm. in your microbiome. What's, mm -hmm. what's truly happening there? Uh, it needs samples over time to yep. be analyzed. And so you have that little sensor uh, on your toilet after you poo that that takes that reads that reads it right yeah so and then that processes that data compared to billions of others of humans that as long as um, the companies aren't siloing the data as long as there is a way to be able to take the 1 billion Chinese 1 billion Africans 1 billion Europeans, one billion Latin Americans, etc how do you and then be able to 1 billion Indians and be able to actually, synthesize those data to find patterns mm -hmm. and then to be able to say that, yeah, actually. I love all this. Yeah. I'm, lear I'm learning from you right now. <laughs> how, how, how far so out do. is that? Uh, there's companies that are already on the um, toilet sensors. Mm -hmm. um, there's companies that are already, so you submit your own uh, fecal samples into them and in that they run like metatranscriptomic analysis of your microbiome, all of those uh, yep. complex yep. organisms that are in there. And then uh, there's even, they even go as far as to say things like, uh, actually there is no such thing as a universally healthy food, which I thought was like, whoa. Like as in like spinach is not good for absolutely everyone. Okay. Or avocados yeah, yeah. are not absolutely good yeah. for everyone. So as in like, uh, actually it's really important for you to like constantly be checking in with what's going on in there because then there could be literally an overtime dynamic process that is so so the amount of time right now that we spend on going like what should we eat you know and like and like going versus just maybe in the future and I don't know how people necessarily feel about this yet but like literally the little like robot is like you know pulling up through the door and it's like oh here's that you know that little snack at you know five o'clock mm -hmm. for you um, and it's already an analysis of what I sh am supposed yeah. to be eating and it's like some you know s some spinach with like whatever raspberry vinaigrette or whatever mm -hmm. and walnuts you know and I'm just like yeah whatever whatever <laughs> it is you know and like so these are kind of the ideas of the future that some people people are in really interested in other people are like I want my free choice in what I uh, do and other people are like no AI coach it you know I, I I guess I love all that I feel like there's so much basic stuff to do of getting people off McDonald's and Pepsi and on <laughs> onto real foods which is but it goes to the, the canna side of it too it's like anytime you can get people into this plant and off pharma in, in all that its manifestations, I think there's a benefit. I think everything you're saying is right. I a lot of what we talk about, like I know there's this world in Venice and people are super conscious of it. They're not in most of the country. Um, and how? What are the steps? Like we succeed if we mainstream this. Yeah. So yeah. How, do, how do I make the cool band sell two million records instead of twenty thousand? Yeah. And that was always the high I got. And I want to do the same thing. I um, see. I like uh, that. But it's true. It's like that's what I mean I like by that. like finding entrepreneurs, and it's like holy fuck, this is game changing. If we do this, you know, it's a company we're working now, and they think they have a solution to the opiate crisis, and that's CBD based. And if that's true, there's 20 million people that are heroin yes. addicts now. So that's the kind of shit we want to try and do. Yes, I love everything you're talking about AI. But how quickly can that stuff be mainstreamed, and does yeah. that? Does that solve some of those other problems where people think they have to be on five prescription meds for the, it's a fucking scam. Like pharma yeah. wants, I call it the subscription model of pills. They want you buying stuff every month and the insurance company's in on it and like it's so broken. 
So. Yeah, I think we're looking at a pretty classical uh, distribution right now where you have like on one of the very progressive tail ends, you have the, the hyper uh, the conscious eaters, uh, conscious yeah. exercisers, whatever, all that stuff. And then you got like the AI is kicking in on, 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 uh, on hopefully being able to democratize some of that yeah. stuff to the um, people that maybe not as aware of it and maybe there's creative s storytelling is such a big thing and that's where what you were just talking about I think that's potentially another field where content being king maybe there's a way to leverage some of the computational capacities and distributing the stories more effectively to people that uh, are uh, on opiates or that are mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, uh, eating processed foods a couple times a, uh, a week you know Things like that. Yep. So that's where I see a lot. And also it's a geopolitical thing because there's a lot of people around the world that are um, also not necessarily on for um, the conscious culture because there was a, uh, a, a Western culture got spread in the sense of the, the sugary drinks and the, and, the, and the fast foods and stuff. And then um, so now there's a whole correction that is happening in those areas uh, as well. And there's the tra traditional Chinese medicine that yep. you were talking about as well. There's still so much discovery, rediscovery in a sense to, mm -hmm. to be made there. So those things kind of like coalesce into um, what modern well-being seems to be um, arc arcing into. And like... Have you, have you spent much time in Europe like on this thing, looking at Canada or wellness or any of this stuff? I'm amazed like, in Europe you have, there's so many um, preservatives, chemicals, things that aren't allowed in food or products in Europe that we that our FDA allows in. Um, mm. That's pretty mind blowing, the number of products and, and the research that they're just looking at that we just ignore. Um, but the flip side of that is, it feel, I was just over there on a, on a deal and they feel on the canna side of stuff, they feel five years behind, probably. Like, they're very curious. They see what's going on. They see the size of the market going 1 billion, 20 billion, 50 billion, you know, in the next decade. But, but they're so far behind in their knowledge, which, I don't know, it's more an observation. I find it interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Um, that's another interesting one where different um, countries have different combinatorial frameworks that they've put up protocols for what they allow in um, to their food systems or what they allow into their media yeah. uh, in, in some ways as well. Uh, uh, and so then how does that work with catalyzing the awakening of wellness? And so which ones are more optimal, which ones are more effective is a question that we love asking and talking about because when you get the ability to run so many experiments you want to then analyze which ones are producing the most efficient wellness augmentation yes yeah. do you have you studied permaculture much i know i'm going all over the map hit, this is great uh, hit, hit us with the permaculture uh have you there's this amazing book called kiss the ground and it's uh ryland from cafe gratitude down he opened the venice one his family started it up here back in the day um, the idea that we can heal the planet by a type of farming. Um, and the, the French government, as like the head of agriculture for the French government, has fully endorsed this stuff. And the science is fully there. But it's the same thing. It's like, can we have the collective will to all get behind this and embrace it and versus these entrenched you know, points of view on how we're going to farm in, in America? And it's... Um, it, it, it's very much the Diamandis mindset of like the solutions are there. It's more about do we have the willpower to, that we can pull the, the sort of poison out of the air and heal our planet. That ability is, we can do it through farming if we all got behind this. Um, so, uh, but that book's fascinating. Um, uh, wait, have you read Why We Sleep? Matt Walker is incredible. Isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's on fire. Yeah. yeah. I love the foundation. He's like, I thought it was three things. I thought it was food, exercise, yeah. and sleep. And that, those are the three legs of the stool, but it's the foundation that everything's built on. Yeah. And it's like that idea of like, if you're a real entrepreneur, you're up at 6 a.m. And it's like, no, sleep in if you need to, because you're going to make better creative decisions yes. and you'll be less stressed off, stressed out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a phenomenal book. Have you had him on? Uh, we spoke with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like him a lot. He's great. Yeah, um, incredible. But it, like to me, that's 
I've, I've easily told 100 people if they read one book this year, that's the book they have to read. Yeah. It just gives you an, another, a whole other perspective into understanding um, cognition as well because you, it, it totally makes sense that if you're up 16 hours that those eight hours are literally meant for those what you took in as sensory inputs those 16 hours for them to basically add into the database of your previous 27 years of life. And that's how it just continues working. That's how you're, it's just, it's just inputs in into storage while you sleep. You got to store it so that you freaking. It's, it's it. wild that that's your, ta like my takeaway from that was more like, because I was always focused on all this other shit of wellness of like, don't drink Coke and exercise uh -huh, yeah. and meditate and drink enough water. And it's like, no, if people aren't getting enough sleep, it doesn't matter if they're doing, if they're getting shitty sleep. Um, doesn't matter what, all these other things and that's that he it's you think it's, I thought it was gonna be the driest book in the world and I found it fascinating mm -hmm. to read like really fun to read mm -hmm. and he goes through it step by step but it, whether it's creativity or totally. just everything it, it really does impact so um, pretty yeah. fascinating yeah yeah I want to um, hit two questions that we typically ask our guests at yeah. the end of every single show first one is are we in a simulation I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> How often do you get that answer? We get I don't know a decent amount. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We yeah we love we love the wide ranging answers on that one. It's very interesting. Yeah. Some people come in like hard yes, some people come in hard no, some people, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, some people are like nuanced about it. It's pretty interesting. And then what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Uh, the journey of life. Like you get to carve out your own vision and then go make it happen. Um, yeah. The ability to continue to learn. The, uh, I don't know, that's probably it. I love it, Jay. Yeah, yeah. I love it. The adventure that we get to embark yeah. on, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you, you for so having much me. For Very much. Loved it. Thank really you. loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all your great work. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We thank greatly you. appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Check out the links in the bio below to Jay's work, to the Wellness Agency. Check out all the links in the bio to that. Also, to New West Summit. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the leaders around the world that you believe in. Support them and help them grow. You can find simulations links below to our show. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Thanks. Good, Good. job, Jay. Thank you, sir. That was super fun. Loved it. Awesome.